Hello everybody, welcome to The Daily Splat. Today is video number 11 in our series of 20, previewing the English Premier League season. And today we are talking about Queen's Park Rangers. So, just looking at the table, QPR survived by the narrowest of margins last season. 37 points managing, uh, they managed sorry, in their first uh, season back in the top flight, finishing just one point clear of Bolton Wanderers and of course involved in that dramatic final day where despite losing to Manchester City, they still stayed up because Bolton failed to beat Stoke. So QPR survived along with the other two sides they came up with, Swansea and Norwich, and now it's all about consolidating and trying to avoid that dreaded second season syndrome. Of course, one in four teams that have been promoted to the Premier League uh, have been subsequently relegated in the second season. Actually, it's slightly more, it's 28%, but about one in four. So, uh, QPR, not wanting to become a statistic, have been very busy in the transfer market. And it, of course, uh, halfway through last season, they sacked Neil Warnock, who got them promotion, and brought in Mark Hughes, who got, you know, got them just over the line, and now he'll be looking at making them a more established Premier League team. And he's done that by buying lots of established Premier League players. So far, they've uh, they've confirmed that Samba Diakite, who they brought in on loan halfway through last season, will be staying as a full-time QPR player. Uh, they've agreed for the uh, the loan, for, for a loan for Manchester United left-back Fabio De Silva. He'll be there for the year, uh, joining also for Manchester United, but permanently Park G. Sung has come over for around about £2 million, although there are suspected add-ons. Uh, They've also managed to bring in Robert Green, the former England goalkeeper, uh, Junior Hoylett, the winger from relegated Blackburn, uh, who's very, very impressive, uh, Andy Johnson they've also brought in uh, from Fulham and formerly of Everton and Crystal Palace, and Ryan Nelson, who, after spending six months at Tottenham, having spent a rather long time at Blackburn, has now joined them to try and keep them up. The great thing for QPR about the signings of Nelson, Johnson, Hoylett and Green, all four of them for free. That's right, didn't cost them a penny in transfer fees, which is good stuff. Of course, they lost goalkeeper Paddy Kenny. He's one of uh, several exits for QPR. I'm just getting the list up here. So the fact that they've managed to bring in Robert Green to replace him. Uh, Green, with Premier League experience, might not be the best keeper going about, but might be good enough for QPR. Paddy Kenny, of course, going off to Leeds United. We also know that QPR have lost the likes of Akos Buzaki, Lee Cook, Danny Gabidon, Fitz Hall, uh, Haider Helgeson and Peter Ramage. They have all left the club, along with a couple of other smaller name players. The point is, though, is QPR have been super, super busy in the transfer window and trying to keep themselves up, and I think they might have just done enough. Um, certainly they're going to be one of the main contenders for relegation. However, I actually think Mark Hughes is... Um, is the, is the right manager for that club right now, and I think he's he's certainly capable of moulding all these desperate uh, separate parts into um, into a good solid Premier League team. They certainly did put in a few good performances last season. Of course, they got big wins at home against uh, you know Chelsea and Liverpool and Arsenal. You know they are capable of sticking it to the to the uh, the big boys. Um, well, I probably shouldn't have said Liverpool in that sentence then. Hmm. Uh, but it, it's all about just trying to get them to to mould together. And of course, with the players who are already there, Gibral Cisse is going to still be at the club, and he either scores or gets sent off, so the entertainment value will be there at least. Um, but they've also, you know, they've got a couple of older players there, likes of Clint Hill and Sean Derry, who, uh, you know, they're getting older, but they're certainly experienced. And with some of the younger players, I reckon they'll be able to teach them a thing or two about. Uh, about well playing football and that sort of thing. All in all, it's I don't think they're going to do that well. I don't think this is going to be you know QPR will finish tenth and you know be ready to make the leap into the European places the next year. Now this is going to be I think they're going to struggle for a bit, but I think ultimately they'll stay up probably like fifteenth, sixteenth. You know just a couple of places higher than last season. Um, yeah, I I think they've. I think they have actually spent well, by virtue of they haven't spent that much, and managed to get a lot of good players for relatively cheap. I'm particularly impressed that they've got Junior Hoyler. I really do rate Hoyler, and, um, you know, he's shown a lot of promise at Blankburn, and hopefully for QPR he'll be able to uh, to keep it going. So, um, all in all, I think QPR fans can look forward to this season. I don't think they're going to go down. I think they'll do enough to stay up. Uh, so, yes. There we go. Okay, that is all for today, uh, and the predictions and all that. Tomorrow, we're going to be looking at one of the newly promoted sides in...
Reading. That's right, we're going to be talking about Reading and seeing, uh, you know, whether they can stay up or not. So make sure you tune in for that. Until then, bye-bye. <laughs>